All righty, everybody. Today is Thursday, April 16th. My name is Brandon Beliso. I want to welcome you to um, the Q&A with Brandon Beliso, presented by Rainmaker, simple, powerful, and easy-to-use martial arts software. This month's webinar is how we earn 75 students in two months. That's going to be the foundation, but I have tons of questions you sent in ahead of time that I'm really grateful to answer for you. As we get started, the first thing I'd like you to do is please take out a piece of paper and write down on that piece of paper your three top values, your three top values. It could be integrity, to always do the right thing. It could be family. It could be community. It could be honesty. It could be gratitude. Whatever three values you hold closest to your heart, that even if I gave you $2 million right now, you would not compromise that value for anything. Write them down. Cool. So as you're writing them down, those three values are really, really important because I say it all the time. Anything I say, if it doesn't resonate with those values, if they're not in line with those values that you hold dearly to your heart, please disregard it. Disregard it because if what I say is not in line with your values, it is useless. You will not act upon it. You will not feel passionate about it. And it's actually going against your grain, right? Going against your values. And that's not a good thing. I don't have the answers for everybody. I just don't. I tell people all the time, there's nothing I can't give you that you can't give yourself. As long as you're clear about those values, you're clear about your vision, you're clear about your purpose, you have that action plan, you have the team in place to facilitate it, I believe you can achieve all your goals. But it begins with those values. So anything I share with you today, if it's not in line with those values, please, I humbly apologize for that and, and just disregard it. Cool? Let's get into it. All right. So we opened our second location on February 9th, and as of April 16th, we have earned 75 active members. They are on paid memberships. We still have another 65 still on trials. These are the numbers courtesy of Rainmaker. We have 21 trials for the month of April. We have 16 new members as of the month of April, and we're at 100% retention in Millbrae. That's easy to do with 75 active members, right? And a bunch of people on trial. So that's not too bad. San Francisco location. Our April monthly statistics as of 416, we're at 599 active members. We have 26 trials right now there and 10 new members. So I'm very proud of Millbrae. Look at the trials and look at the new members uh, as compared to San Francisco, which has been around since the year 2000. Very established in that community, doing very well with 599 active members. We had a great year last year. We did a million and 10,000. I just paid the government like $56,000 in taxes. So I walked home with 30% last year, which was really nice. So I made a little over 300,000. And I share my numbers very transparently because I wanted people to know the potential that exists, that exists with a service-based business. All right, so what do I think's gotten us to that point? Our marketing strategy has been a mix of the following. Number one is relevant location. You know, I'm a big advocate of location, location, location. I was talking to my good friend, John Cassidy of Top Kick. He's out on the East Coast. He, they have seven locations, I believe now. And, um, you know, I said, why don't you buy any of your buildings? He said, because nobody will sell anything to me in a relevant location. So I took that word relevant to heart, and it means a lot to me. So at the current location we have, we're anchored by 24-hour fitness, a big food chain called Trader Joe's, another one called Safeway. We're also anchored by Office Depot, Starbucks, Jamba Juice, Subway Sandwich, um, a new franchise called Paris Baguette, which is Korean owned and it's, it's huge worldwide. We have a Walgreens, which is a huge um, kind of convenient drugstore thing. Uh, and so do you see what I'm saying? So we're anchored and we get to share in that franchise business. People congregate here. People flock here because of those established names and businesses and brands. So I'm very big on location, location, location. We are a service-based culture. And that was very unique moving out into this community and opening a school. Uh, the bigger schools out here all use contracts, enrollment fees, upgrades like Blackwell clubs, master's clubs, things like that. Uh, they have, you know, membership fees every year just to be part of their, their, their school. So all that stuff, we do none of it, none of it, none of it. And that trips people out about our business model. Uh, but it's what I believe in. 
I believe if I serve people really, really well, the byproduct will be that we make money. Now, don't get me wrong. I think part of our absolutes, we want to be a response. We want to be fiscally sound and a responsible business. We are, right? We are. I mean, already at this location, we've brought in over $60,000, $60,000 in two months in a brand new location. That's about 30 K a month, right? So I think that's really good. I'm great for my rent and my payroll and everything's paid for these months. Um, so we are a service-based culture. And, and somebody said, well, one of my friends, a Korean master said, well, we must teach commitment. That's why without a year commitment, then they're not a good student. That's not the student I want. That's the one I don't. And I said, that's cool. If that's your value system and, and you know, that's where your head's at. But John said this really well. Again, John Cassie said, what's really neat about having people on month to month is every day they walk through that door, we know they can give us a 30 day notice and quit. So do we work harder to serve them? I believe so. Sometimes I believe if I have someone locked into a one year contract, that's money in the bank. Whether I teach you well or not, whether I serve you or not, you are obligated to pay me for a year, correct? So I think on a humanistic level, it's, it's just so much better to know that every time they walk through that door, we need to serve them really, really well. Um, pre-registration online via a profit generator. You can set those up in Rainmaker. People were able to pre-register for our school. But you know, ironically, we only got about 15 people to pre-enroll before we opened our doors. Uh, but we had over 400 click-throughs to the website. So what that taught me there, people want to know you're open, your doors are open, you're active in the community. That's super important. And again, we're not a well-known brand name. Now, somebody like a 24-hour fitness, they can get, you know, hundreds, even thousands of pre-registrations because people know the brand name. Cool? SEO is huge, huge, huge. I'm challenged because I work with a lot of school owners and I check their websites and I go, okay, you know, who did this for you? I did it myself. And they're proud of it. And, you know, more power to you. But honestly, in today's culture, you need to have an amazing website. We're getting ready to launch our website shortly. And it's amazing. It's unlike anything in the industry. We're on the cutting edge, but that's really relevant out here. You know why? I live in a community where Facebook lives here. Apple lives here. YouTube lives here. LinkedIn, Twitter, Amazon, Yahoo. All those companies are right here, you know, near us in, in, in San Francisco in the Bay Area. So when they look at a website that's outdated, that's unresponsive, you know, that's heavily sales based, they laugh at it because they're the ones who designed those sites five, six years ago. They're already on to the new thing. So I find that's very important because it resonates with them because it's their language. So SEO is real crucial. Do take that into note. If your website is unresponsive, meaning to say it doesn't look good on a tablet, it doesn't look good on a cell phone. We know 40% of viewing nowadays is on a smartphone, 40%. So if you put your website up right now on your smartphone, and it doesn't look good and it's not responsive and the pictures look really small and, and the copy is really small, you're in big trouble. Because I think the date's the end of this month. It's coming up very near. Google's going to start lowering your ranking. If your website is not responsive and, and, and those spiders search it out through Google and people can't look at it well on a smartphone or a tablet, guess what? You're done for. You're going to drop in the rankings. So if you're number one now, please go to work on your website. Make sure it is responsive. That's the word you look for. So we have our Google places, our Google business. Google's presence is huge. It's huge. It's huge. And Google is tied into what? YouTube. It bought up YouTube a number of years ago. So we're spending a lot of time starting to post video ads now. We're working in that direction. Video ads, posting a lot of videos at, at YouTube because, again, it shows a lot of traffic, improves our ranking with Google. Facebook ads. I know a lot of us are looking at that. Facebook ads are a big thing. But I heard that the other day. A guy said, hey, I ran this ad back in January, and we're running it now. We're getting zero response. Back in January, we got a great response. Of course, because many ads are time sensitive. You know, like I will only do direct mail pieces in January, May, September. Why? Beginning of the year fitness. May, summer day camps, people leaving for summer. September, people coming back from school. If I did a direct mail piece any other time throughout the year, it, it's flat. I get zero response. So be mindful with your Facebook ads. It's an organic environment, right? Social media is organic. It's changing. It's morphing. It's moving. So you want to make sure you're constantly watching those ads, looking them up. But I know from working with people, really good people in our industry, that it is not an exact science. If anybody wants to try to tell you that what you do with Facebook ads is an exact science, I'm, I'm going to challenge them on that. Okay, people? I'm going to challenge them on that because it is not an exact science. Cool? All right. More people are coming on. I'm just checking in our numbers here. They're going up. If you come on the call, as long as you can hear me and see the screen, can you just type it in there and say hi? That way I know because sometimes I feel like I'm just talking out there. 
to, to the cloud, right? So go ahead and type in your name, all the people that are coming on that have joined us. I would really appreciate that. Now, so going back to SEO, um, Twitter is big. You want some relevant Twitter links like we're posting, hey, grand opening, grand opening, grand opening. That's big for us. LinkedIn, you want to network with other business people. To me, LinkedIn in many ways is like the internet version of the Chamber of Commerce. You want to be hooked into other business people. You want to be networking. You want to be posting at LinkedIn. Don't disregard that. Yelp. I know school owners love and they hate Yelp. They love it and they hate it. Why do they hate it? Number one reason, they post the bad reviews and they filter my good ones, right? Right? Number one, hey, Carol, welcome. Juan, welcome, sir. More new people coming on, right? They say, I love Yelp and I hate it because they filter out my good reviews. I'm going to tell you why. I've been a Yelp client for about nine years. Go look at both our Yelp pages for One Martial Arts San Francisco, One Martial Arts Millbrae. People trust Yelp. Before it used to be just for restaurants, things like that. Not anymore. Dry cleaners, some of the best businesses in the world. Go look for them. You'll see brand names sitting at Yelp now because people trust Yelp. It's here. It's not going away. It's like Facebook. Get used to it, right? And you can really utilize it. So here's why they filter out your bad reviews. And you'll feel me on this. You set up a, a computer in your lobby. Between Here we are on a Monday. So suddenly between 4.15 and 7.30, Yelp gets flooded with reviews. Okay, red flag, red flag. They're all reviews on your business. Secondly, it's got your IP address. It's coming from your computer. Think about that, your IP address at your school. There's another red flag. So automatically they're gonna stomp on it. And then the third one is, they've never done a Yelp review in their life, ever, ever. And all of a sudden they post a review on you. So do you see how the Yelp spiders, you know, the filters are going red flag, red flag, red flag. There's three red flags. Okay, so what do I tell my clients to do? Well, if you want to leave us a Yelp review, they should be a Yelper. They should be. I've done other reviews. Set up a Yelp account. Do a review on a restaurant. Next week, do a review on a dry cleaner. Week after that, then do a review on my martial arts school. And I would give to you 99%. It's going to stick and it will show. Does that make sense to you guys? Makes absolute, absolute sense, right? absolute sense. So that's the thing with Yelp. And we just done another commercial for our Millbury location. It's got a video. You got to have a video with Yelp. And thirdly, you know, if you used a paid where you're using the paid services, I don't know, 250 to 300 a month, you know, a thousand impressions, 500 impressions, whatever that may be. When you look at your Yelp page right now, if you don't have that surface, they can post any other ads they want there. So there you go. Boom. I, I, I've got a Yelp listing. So I go to look at your Yelp listing. There's your karate school on top right? Directly below that, before you ever look at a review or anything, you're going to see an ad. That could be an ad on dog grooming. That could be an ad on a competitor, another martial arts school. I don't think I want to associate that with my brand. I have no control over it. You know, it's, 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 I don't want co-brand with somebody, like especially another martial arts school. So do look at your Yelp and, and, and don't disregard it. Please don't disregard it. Another thing that's been big for us in achieving this goal is Yext. Yext is huge. There's another one called single platform. What it really does is you got one hub updating all your business listings across the board with just one touch. So if I change the schedule, let's say hypothetically, I change a schedule and I add a class, guess what? It's gonna post at every business listing that Yex has me set up on. I don't have to manually go to each you know, platform and make that change. So you need some kind of service like Yex single platform is another one that does that as well. So do look at those things, please. Another one that's been big for us in house community events. You need to get people into your school, right? It's great to be at a fair. It's great to be at, you know, all those different things, but what is going to better promote your business responsibly than to get them in your school? Feel me? So here's a number of things we've done. We've done, we partnered up with every PTA, every PTA. And the first simple one was easy. Somebody signs up for a $99 trial. Out of that $99, if whatever school they go to, we'll give $50 back to the PTA. That has been huge. It shows we give back to the community. We're a business that cares. And all you got to do is send a letter to the PTA, find a mom in your school that's on the PTA. Moms are super important. Don't disregard that. I mean, when I opened my school in San Francisco, and I'll come back to that, this other thought, I was a single guy in San Francisco. How long it took me to grow that school to 600? Five, six years. It took a long time. Whereas now living in Melbourne, being married, having a three-year-old, a six-year-old, and my wife is so active in the community, I cannot tell you the impact my wife has had on this business 
huge, huge, huge. So if you're a single guy or a single woman, find a mom in your school. You got tons of moms. You've got raving fans. They're there. Just tap into that resource because you've got to have that insight. It is. Sometimes it is who you know. And I know that because when we first got to Millbrae, I sent out the um, one of our team members. He's a guy. He contacted every elementary school, every preschool, high school. Everybody shut the door on him. Everybody gave him a lukewarm response. My wife, oh, I can't believe how quickly those doors open. So in-house community events we've done. So we aligned with the PTA. Like I said, $99 trial, $50, $50 goes back to the PTA. We've done a crab feed. We've done a casino night. We've done a shamrock shindig. And all those are fundraisers thrown by the PTA where all the parents attend. They're normally four hours, you know, six to 10, somewhere like that on a Saturday night. Guess what? They charged to have the kids babysat. They came here to our school. We just like doing a half day of day camp, dodgeball, arts and crafts, Legos, board breaking, life skills, ba 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 ba, and and feed them pizza. And all the money that they paid went right back to the school, right back to the school. And someone said, "Well, I need to make rent. I'm a brand new school owner. I have all these bills." Yes, don't spend your time trying to save fifty cents. Spend your time earning a dollar. Speaking to another school owner. Stood outside his school with him. I said, what do you see when you look in your windows? Well, I see uh, 10 paying students on the floor, sir. I said, no, no, what I see is an empty school. He goes, what do you mean? Well, it's like a good restaurant. If you go up to a restaurant and it's packed and there's a wait, you know, would you be more inclined to want to eat there? Absolutely, right? Either way, you got to pay rent. Either way, you have payroll. Either way, all those expenses are not going to change. Why not pack it with people, you know, and create that buzz, right? So we've done a lot of that. So imagine walking by here at seven o'clock on a Saturday night and we got 50 kids playing dodgeball and this place is packed and the lights are on and the music's blaring versus a Saturday night. It's closed because I want to charge everybody who walks to my door. Not at this point. It doesn't make a lot of sense to us. So that's been big for us. Um, we've done, I don't know, a half dozen birthday parties all really heavy theme based. We did a big hero six. We did power Rangers where it's decked out tables, cups, Plates, everything's in that theme, balloons, everything. We handpick kids from different schools and give them a free birthday party. What's the only condition? They have to be bring at least 25 kids from their school. 25, and it's, it's averaged 40 kids. Either way, why? I wanna spend $1,000 on an ad or spend, what, $500 on a birthday party? Staffing, pizza, decorations and all. Electricity, insurance, the whole nine yards. You feel me? That's been huge for us. We're at about 75 weeks of day camp already booked for this location because of these types of events. We've done a lot of classes. We've gone to the kindergarten at this elementary, done an afternoon buddy day for them. We've done all these different events and they're all adding up heavily for us. We did an event for the Girl Scouts. And right now in two months, we've probably done every Saturday and Sunday for two months. So do the math. What's that, about 20 different events? 20. So it's been crazy. And then grassroots campaigning is huge. You got to be in that community. You need to be visible. But again, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. If I go to a community event and you're standing out there with a clipboard soliciting people to come into your booth and you've got that, that salesman look on your face and you're drooling going, come on in, come on in, like some barker or some snake and oil you know, salesman want to sell you some new toxic elixir you know, that's going to cure hair loss. Man, it's not a good vibe. And, and we get that all the time. We do. We do. So check this out. You ever walk through the mall and you have that person with the kiosk in the middle trying to sell you the sea salt lotion or something like that. And the first thing they say to you is, hey, I've got a question for you. That's the new one, right? Can I ask you a question? And you're going, no, thank you. That's okay. And you're walking away. Tell me, is that a good experience? I'm waiting. Type it in the box. Is that a good experience? Anybody? I want to know you're still there. Talk to me. Is that a good experience when you get that in the middle of the mall and somebody says to you, can I ask you a question? Come on, someone type it in. Who's with me? I want to make sure we're all here. 26 on mobile ranking change. Good. April 21st on the mobile ranking change. Thank you for that input. Um, type in. Is everybody there? Good. All right. Good. All right. I thought I lost you guys. Okay. So that's why when we make sure, here's an example of our booth. And, and, and to me, this is money. Money. This is money. Okay. And for us, here's the example. We have balloons on a stick. 
People say, why do you put a balloon on a stick? Because we want to be eco-friendly. A kid takes that balloon, it gets away from them, it goes up in the air, it pollutes the environment. Second, the kid just wants the balloon. Whether it's on a stick or not is another day, right? Helium is very, very expensive. It keeps going up, you know? And, and so we were mindful of that too. Well, let's get rid of the helium. Let's put the balloon on a stick. Kid still gets the balloon. They are happy. Second, someone's dressed as Kung Fu Panda or some other kind of mascot. Third, we have boards ready out for them to break. So when they walk into our booth, we simply introduce them to a life skill. For us, it's focus. And we say, all right, you wanna break this board? Yeah, I'd love to break the board. Great, but you gotta help me, okay? And mind you, the parent's standing right there. Can you say focus, sir? Focus, sir. And focus means pay attention. What does focus mean? Pay attention, sir. All right, when you pay attention, you look with your eyes, sir. Listen with your ears, sir. Think with your mind, sir. And do the right thing with your body. So when your parents are talking to you, you should look right at your, and the kid goes, parents, sir. When your teachers are teaching, you listen to them with your ears, sir. Whoa, that's pretty cool. When you're doing your ABCs and one, two, threes, you think about what you're doing with your mind, sir. And if I'm walking across a busy street, got to do the right thing with my body, sir. Awesome. You ready to break this board? Mom's standing there going, wow, I thought martial arts was kicking and punching. Life skills, people, life skills. Okay, and I'll get into that a little more heavily in a minute. So then the kid breaks the board. We give them a focus merit badge. They walk out of there with a you know brochure or some type of handout. Day's done. No hard sell. Don't capture information. Don't try to get that lead. You know because people feel that's intrusive. Now what we do have on the table is we're giving away a one hundred dollar Visa gift card. That's it. So if you'd like to leave your name and email, not address, not phone number, your name and email, please feel free to do so. That's it. No prodding, no prying, no second, nothing. Done. Can you see that experience? What do you think? Is that a better experience? What do you think? Anybody? I'm waiting. All right. The yeses have it. Okay, Carol, thank you for being there. Now, these are brand absolutes. Another reason why I believe we have 75 students in two months, okay? Teach amazing classes. People go, duh, I do teach amazing classes. Yeah, we're all famous in our own mind. And I'm gonna call us all out on that. I'm gonna call you out, I'm gonna call you out, I'm gonna call you out. Working with one school owner. Well, I teach the way my teacher taught me and the way his teacher taught him. I'm about tradition. Yeah, but martial arts was made by men for men to do battle. This is a kid with no confidence. This is a kid with child obesity. Their parents don't want them to do battle. Their parents want them to lose weight and feel good about themselves and build their confidence. We can't teach the way our teachers taught us. I taught the way my dad taught me when I was 18 years old. I had a school in LA. It was closed in nine months, nine months. So I'm sure you feel me on that. Try to look at your curriculum as food in a restaurant, right? Try to look at your business like a restaurant. That food on that menu better rock. It better rock. It better rock. We visit our curriculum on a yearly basis, review it. We find the holes. We find where the attrition's high, and we're constantly bettering it, bettering. Imagine if Mac never came out with anything more than, you know, um, the iMac way, way back when. Imagine if they never invented the iPhone. They never invented the iPad. They never invented the iPod because I'm just going to do it the way we did it when we first did it, and we're always going to do it that way. Could you imagine where would they be? We need to think like that. We're innovators. Now, I'm not asking you to run out and buy every off-the-shelf program because then you're like a smorgasbord. You're a jack of all trades and a master of none. My core system is Kenpo Karate. That is the majority of what we do. We generate 75% revenue from traditional martial arts classes. But do I pepper that like, like Kyoshi Kovo says with the jelly beans? Do I throw in a little hyper? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I throw a little jujitsu? Yes. But our core program is our core program. I'm challenged when you've got an inexperienced school owner who simply goes across the board, Krav Maga, Hyper, da, 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 and they have no clear vision. I walk in that school and I don't see your brand. I don't see your identity. I just see all these different programs kind of mushed, mushed into one. You feel me on that? So be careful with that. You want to make sure that your menu, the curriculum you offer is top. The top, top, top. Second, offer a highly trained performance-based team. Highly trained. What does it take to highly train someone? Well, I get questions all the time. I don't have a system of, of training my team. You need to have a system. That'll be the first beginning part of creating that, creating that for them. And second, you know, for me, it's training and training and training some more. 
Me and my team train on a weekly basis, a monthly basis. We train. And the kicker here is my guys are paid to train with me from 7.30 to 9 o'clock. It's written into their schedule. It's part of what they do. I think the big disconnect there is we don't respect people's time. We think old school. You know, you're lucky to train with me. I'm giving you all these leadership skills. Somebody posted that. Well, you know, they're lucky to train with me. I'm giving them a $100,000 education in business. Okay. All right. If you want to believe that, that's cool. But I believe that in exchange for me offering you all these leadership skills, you, you volunteer to teach an hour a week. That's cool, right? That's humble, right? And people believe it. But the minute people are there and they're not being paid, there's a certain dissension, the separation between your team. I don't care how you want to slice or dice it. I don't care. I, you know, that's the real world, right? Write systems where your team does it better than you, please. Do that right away. Do that right away. Why don't we do that? Number one is ego. Ego says, no, nobody does it better than me. I'm the master. No, if you're a great teacher, every one of your students should do it better than you. I believe that. So check the ego. Don't worry about them taking half your students and opening up a block away because you're going to be such a business that people want to work for that they're never going to want to leave. That should be in one of your goals. Create the business that everybody wants to work for. Cool. Next, have the best program in life skills education. I can't say that enough. Now, it's not to, you know, push my one merit badges. There's so many great life skills programs out there. But please do not think because you're a black belt that you are qualified to teach life skills. You are not. You are not. There's a lot of research, study, you know, data. You've got to do your homework. And, and a lot of us think that because I'm a black belt, I can teach, you know, self-defense workshop because I'm a black belt. I can teach a bully defense workshop because I'm a black belt. I can teach a home invasion, you know, real estate person, you know, workshop. No, you're not. I'm not. I would never say that. You know, I, I've studied jujitsu for four years. I wouldn't say I could teach jujitsu. No way. So we want to really be mindful about that. You want to have the best. And in order to do that, you got to do your homework, right? You got to do all your homework. So be careful, especially when it comes to life skills. But the reason I say that, you know, passionately is because nobody is going to walk up to a soccer coach and say, hey, teach my child discipline, teach my child focus. But they will walk into your school and they will expect and demand it. And if you don't have the highest level in a program of life skills education, you're squandering a very unique opportunity. That's one of our unique sales points that nobody else can touch. Do you agree with me? Nobody can touch that. But if we're not teaching those life skills at the highest level, we're missing the boat. We're squandering a great opportunity. I think another reason we have 75 students in two short months at this location is because we have a unique preschool kindergarten program. And that's my Excellent Kids program. There's a lot of great ones out there. Find one that resonates with your values. Implement it. Now, here's another one. Offer a full and flexible schedule right away out of the gate, much like San Francisco till this day, we offer our beginning program Monday through Saturday here in San Francisco. It's Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, because I saw right away one of the big obstacles for a brand new parent is, does this fit my schedule? And if I say, well, yeah, we have beginning classes on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, uh, I just, ah, that's three quarters of the people gone. So how can they say no if you have classes seven days a week? They wouldn't be there if they had some kind of time to be there. So we offer it six days a week in Millbrae, soon to be seven. And then we have a great makeup policy. If you can't make your regularly scheduled class, simply call in and schedule a makeup class for that week. Cool? So there's another thing that helps as well. And, and we found that's really, really crucial in the success of what we've done. And lastly, and I didn't put that in here, we have a separate beginner's class. Do not Mix that beginner with a year one student. Do not. It's intimidating. It's overwhelming. It's hard for the instructor to manage. You want to teach a, a beginning class all by itself. And that's been huge for us. And, you know, one of my team members said that to me in the first month there. He go, why don't we just put all the white belts together in one class? Because we had one class with two kids, another class with three kids, another class with eight kids. We even had a class with one kid. Why don't you take all these beginner classes and just put them on one day? I said, sir. Absolutely not. That kid who's coming on Wednesday, he can't come Tuesday. That kid who's coming on Friday, he can't come Saturday. So you feel me there? Offering a beginning schedule six, seven days a week is crucial to growing your school quickly and swiftly. And of course, offer an amazing environment. Anybody who's seen our new location, you know, I put 140K into this business, 140K. You've seen the videos I posted during construction. It's immaculate, right? It's immaculate. People look at it and go, wow, that, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Next one, develop a culture unlike anything out there. Culture, 
Culture, great book to read, is Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea. The culture that they created at, at Zappos, the shoe company in, out in, uh, in, in Nevada, is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. I mean, it's like Disneyland in many respects. Look at the new Facebook facility that's being built um, over in Silicon Valley. They have like a three-mile walking track with trees and grass and everything on the roof, on the roof. And this building's circular with glass on all sides. I mean, phenomenal. You really want to create that culture. So it's environment, it's philosophy, it's values. But if you're not constantly visiting that and, and growing it, because it must consistently grow. No, I teach the way my teacher taught me and his teacher taught him. Okay, fine. But I look at business like a plant. If it's not growing, it's dying. In order for it to grow, I got to water, I got to prune it, put it in the sun. Same thing here. Your business is, is like a living, breathing organism, and it's always growing, morphing, changing, adapting. But the one thing that never changes are your core values. And that's straight from Good to Great by Jim Collins. And then lastly, you know, serve your clients really well and learn ways to serve them better. I can't express that enough. Okay. Be very mindful of that. Every day we're finding out how can we serve you better? How can we serve you better? How can we serve you better? Cool. Now. Life skills is the main reason why parents seek out martial arts versus any other activity for their child. Many school owners squander that unique opportunity by not using a proven character development system. I'm going to go quickly through one merit badges. I always feel bad about this if and when I do, but I've had enough of a demand, so I'm going to do that. I hope you bear with me and you write down some notes on this. Cool? All right. So it's currently we're in 284 martial arts schools worldwide. We're in Germany, the UK, Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, Ireland, and the USA. We're endorsed by Roland Osborne, Tom Callos, Randy Reed, and many other industry leaders. What makes One Merit Badges unique is I believe if I educate the student and the parent, I educate the instructor, and I give them tools, I create this environment of life skills. We live, eat, and breathe life skills. So number one is the student-parent handout. Self-explanatory. There's the overview. The It's written in the kids' terms. Oh, I put the instructor sheet in there, but that's okay. If we have a student-parent handout, and there's, it speaks in kids' terms. It speaks in parents' terms. Very simple. We give that handout every class. All right, folks, we're on focus this week. Does anybody need the focus handout? First couple of days, everybody needs it. That parent is walking out of there with tools, tools they can use to educate their child at home. It's such a huge disconnect when a parent says to me, I wish my child was as well behaved at home as they are at your school. We've all heard that. We are missing the boat as an educator. I want to bridge that gap. And that student parent handout helps facilitate that. Second, we have a mat chat. It is a scripted mat chat where the kids finish your sentences. I kind of touched upon that earlier. If I say focus means look with your, the whole classroom goes eyes, sir. I say listen with your, the whole classroom goes ears, sir. And the band played on. My papa could lecture for hours and we had to sit in silence. This way the kids aren't staring out the window. They're, they're chomping at the bit. They're engaged, they're interactive, and they're finishing your sentences. But it's a one minute mat chat and we do our mat chats at the beginning of class not the end. At the end, you should end with a fun game. We do a quick one minute match chat after our warm up, and then throughout the whole class, one liners, one liners, one liners. Now, why is that crucial? I'll talk about that. Because think about it, that parent walks in from Starbucks, they sit down with their Starbucks in the middle of class, you're talking about, okay, we're doing ripping tiger meets the dragon on the mountain. Parents go, and I have no freaking idea what you're talking about. They walk in and say, wow, you, and you respond with, wow, Johnny, sir, that's awesome. I focus. I like your, how you're looking where you're kicking and punching. Make sure you look at your parents when they're talking to you. Kick, punch, kick, punch. Another parent walks through their door. Wow, little Susie, I think that's awesome. Ear focus. You did that move right away when I called it out. Make sure you listen to your teachers when they're teaching you. Kick, punch, kick, punch. You feel me? Pretty amazing, right? Then, of course, the instructor handout is vital. I have 14, 15-year-old team members. They may not understand a life skill that's sophisticated like integrity. If that 14, 15 year old can really embrace that life skill through staff training when we go over these materials, guess what? They're empowered, right? And they're going to deliver that match out with so much more believability and it's part of their nature and their habit. Number four, badges. Badges, not patches, not freaking stickers. Stop giving out stickers. Trader Joe's gives out stickers. Dentists give out stickers. Doctors give out stickers. You want to be associated with a doctor? Hey, I just came from the doctor. They gave me a shot. You know what I got for the shot? A freaking sticker. You feel me? Stop it with the stickers. I find them at the bottom of our benches. I find them everywhere. Nobody embraces that. There's no value with that. There's no higher value associated with that. We call them badges. There's one of them for focus. We have great display cases for visual support. In my, each one of my training areas, we have 
these racks nine deep with every life skill we have. Kids stand in front of that thing going, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. It's like a kid in a candy store. You know, I'm experienced with my six-year-old son. He wants these amiibo things. He wants to collect all of them. Now he's into Pokemon. He wants to collect all of them. He was into Thomas the Train. I had 60 different trains. They want all of them. So the same thing with these badges. It resonates with a child because they want to collect them all. Collect them all, collect them all. So here's what's else unique. They have written materials that educate the student, parent, instructor, thus creating that culture of life skills education. It's an organic habit versus task-driven behaviors. Now, here's how I really, that aha moment in my life. I was judging a tournament, and this junior black belt stepped into the ring, right? And this junior black belt had perfect form. You know, they had perfect respect. Sir, my name is Perfect Confidence. Whoa, this kid was a rock star. Every life skill I could imagine, he was just spewing, you know, and everything he did, boom, first place trophy. 15 minutes later, that same kid had his black belt tied around his head and he was kicking and punching his friend. Did he really possess those life skills or was he simply dancing for the prize? I would think it's the latter. So you want it to become habit-based, not task-driven. And I know we wear that like so proudly. Yeah, in order to uh, get your next tip, you have to go home and clean the house and get it signed off by your parent and your teacher and the neighbor next door. And you're, okay. I get it. I know where you're going with that. And that's cool. But nothing is better than to recognize a habit that's being displayed when nobody's looking. And that's what we look for. You look at the kids, they bend their knees. You look away, they straighten them. You look at the kids, they bend their knees. Do they really understand that bending their knees is going to give them better balance and better technique? No. They're simply bending their knees for your approval so they can get your sticker, right? We want to look for kids when they're not looking. And when we see that and we reward that behavior, it is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. So I believe in habit versus task-driven behaviors. It's simple and effective. There's no dancing dogs. There's no animated characters. You know, it's simply a meat and potatoes. And where does that come from? My 20 years as a fighter. You step into the ring. I used three or four techniques. That was it. That was it. I didn't need bells and whistles and dancing characters and cartoons and, and all of that. I don't believe that. It's a simple nuts and bolts educational system. That's what I believe. Respect was good a thousand years ago. Respect is good today. It'll be good another thousand years from now. If I need to coat that with sugar and candy and animated characters, then I need to go back to the drawing board and I need to really think how I'm teaching that. Because who am I trying to educate? Really, the facilitator. You're the one that's got to teach us on a weekly basis. Cool? And then we support you. I'm here all the time, Skype, phone meetings. We do that constantly because you're not buying badges. You're investing in a relationship with me, my sister, one merit badges, which is a family-owned business. And then last but not least, people ask me this all the time. We have no ongoing memberships. I don't need you to pay my mortgage. So I don't need X number of clients for my monthly subscriptions so I can make my rent. That's the premise of subscriptions. But how many subscriptions have you bought where the material after three months is regurgitated, recycled, and reprocessed? You feel me? Somebody give me an amen on that one. Anybody? Come on. Can I get an amen? <laughs> so that was the problem with me with a lot of these memberships is that, you know, half the stuff I didn't use. How many of you can walk in your office right now and you've got a whole box, you know, of tons and tons of stuff from maybe the old NAPMA days or whatever, even currently, whatever's out there. Because you, you, So you pick and choose by which you want, when you want, as you want. Some of you are young school owners on tight budgets. You can't afford to pay anybody $99 a month, let alone $199 or $299. I think it's insane. It's insane, right? It's insane. So that's basically what One Merit Badges is all about. All right. Oh, what's this? There we go. Okay, great. Let me get into some of your questions. Yay. What percentage of your monthly gross do you strive to allot? To the different areas of your school. Now, if there's spelling errors here, I just cut and paste your questions, um, i.e. rent, utilities, customer appreciation, events, payroll, marketing, etc. I know there is no golden formula, but I'm asking what you personally think on this issue. Well, right now at the new location, 100% of my budget goes to rent and payroll. <laughs> That's it, right? That's it. San Francisco, I'm going to use that because it's a better business model because it's more established. You know, we're a million dollar company. We're about a 10% rent because it's a relevant location. Please, don't always look for cheap rent. I know a guy whose who school is over in the industrial area in some warehouse. He, he's hurting. He's hurting. There's no foot traffic. Oh, I'll take care of it with SEO. I'll do it with Facebook ads. I'll do it with Google, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I tell you, when a mom can drop her kid off here and walk, you know, half a block down to Trader Joe's and take care of shopping or walk right upstairs and go to 24-hour fitness and climb on a treadmill for 30 minutes or walk across the street to Starbucks and get herself a cup of coffee and have a break from it all. Uh-uh. I'm sorry, relevant location. So I'm happy to play 10% rent. Payroll for me right now is about 25 to 30%. Again, 
school owners will pride themselves. My payroll is only 5%. Yeah, that's because you're teaching all the time and you have no staff. So of course your payroll is low. Again, restaurant industry is, is, is my formula. They do roughly 30 to 35% of their revenue is for payroll. I dig that. I dig it because that means I have freedom. In the last school for the past three years, I've worked an average of five hours a week for three years. Three years. I love it. I'm happy to pay for that. It's worth a lot of money to me. So again, my payroll is a little higher. Marketing, you know, that, that's a bizarre animal. You know, some of us pride that I do no marketing whatsoever. And okay, great. That doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense to me. You know, look at, again, follow the big boys, Apple, Sony, anybody. You need to spend money on marketing. And if you're not doing that, then okay. No wonder you have 100 students after 30 years, you know? I mean, I have no sympathy for that. You need to educate yourself, and marketing is important. I spend a lot of money right now in this new location, a lot, a lot, a lot in marketing. But you know what? It'll pay dividends on the back end. We've done three direct mail pieces right now, you know, everyday direct mail, because we need people to know who we are and that we're here. What's better way than to get this big, giant, you know, direct mail postcard in the mail? And they will look at it. Even if it's for a second, then they toss it in the trash. They will look at it, boom, plant one seed, hit them again, hit them again. But after that, we won't do anything again now until May before day camp and September when they go back to school and then next January for fitness. Other than that, we would never do direct mail pieces, cool? But marketing is crucial. I would tell people with a young school, spend as much money as you can that you can afford into marketing. But it's a combination, right? The in-house stuff. You know, the festivals, direct mail pieces, Facebook ads, get your Google places up, get your Yex listings all going, get your Yelp going, do all those different things. Because you don't want to advertise one way to 70 people. You want to advertise 70 ways to 70 people. You feel me on that? So when someone tells you, yeah, we're going to spend $1,000 on this, you know, late night cable TV commercial. Okay, there's all your budget for the year. So roughly 5% for me. How do you determine how many staff to have on your team? Well, let's talk about that. What's one of the, the, the questions you get from a new parent? How many kids in the class? Okay, boom. So what are they saying with that question right away? I don't want to walk into a school where there's 30 kids and one instructor. It's not happening. It is not happening. So we work roughly with a seven to one ratio. Seven to one. There's normally a you know lead instructor. There's an assistant instructor. And then we'll supplement with strong um, leadership. People out of our, and well, we don't call it leadership. We call out our instructors in training. Any of our instructors in training can fill that out. But always seven to one, whether it's day camp, whether it's our classes, we're at seven to one. I'm passionate about overstaffing with competent staffing, of course. You know, I got three challenging uh, staff members out there. I have three challenging staff members out there. I'd rather have three rock stars who are passionate on training, but we're passionate on overstaffing our classes because parents find that extremely appealing and it works really, really well. You feel me? Cool. All right. Now, you know, I think it's all of the above. I base it upon student counts, financial resources, all of it, all of it, all of it. Uh, we believe that in order to, to provide the highest level for service in a group class, it should be about seven to one. So um, I know that's a little redundant, but people look at me all the time and go, what? Seven to one? I'm a one man show and blah, 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 blah. I get that. I get your one person show. Change that immediately. As Kiyoshi Kovar says, plant seeds early and often. We're looking at 10-year-old yellow belts right now that are rock stars. I've got a girl here who's 11 that just earned her yellow belt. We're already priming her to work day camp three years from now because I believe she's that type of person and she can offer us that, 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 that have that type of impact on our business. Cool? So here's the next question. When looking to open location, either as a move or a new one, what do you look for in a lease agreement? Are there red flags that you try to negotiate? Do you use an attorney? And how long do you stay? in negotiations. Okay. Um, we always use an attorney. Please, please, please spend the money now or spend it later. You know, you look at most lease agreements, unless it's a person who owns the building and, and, and you know, it's one person. Man, I always use an attorney. I know how much the bills are. I think I paid like $6,000 between setting up the articles for the LLC, between lease negotiation, between all these different things. But you know what? It's tight and it's right, as we say. It's tight and it's right. And I'm happy with that. I put my head down on the pillow at the end of the day and I sleep well. And there's no rock unturned. There's no holes. We're in great shape. So, you know, we negotiate for free rent up front. I think that's important during the build out and all that. But somebody said to me, you know, well, I got a year free rent. And the first thing I said to them is, where are you located? And it's, you know, some rural area on some back strip mall. Yeah, I haven't rented this thing for three years. 
So I'm happily going to give you a year free rent. I can't get anybody in there to begin with. So I'll be very careful with that. And in the relevant location where they have Starbucks and 24-Hour Fitness and Jamba Juice and all that, are they going to give me a year of free rent? Absolutely not. I got three months here. But you want to try to get some amount of free rent, you know, at least during the build-out. We try to get fixed rent, you know, because every year it increases by 4%. That's standard. In most lease agreements, it's a 4% each lease each year. So you want to go in and try to get the rent fixed for the first couple of years while you're trying to build, Okay. And if that doesn't happen, in this case, it didn't happen at this location, but I just renegotiated a new 10-year lease on our first location, I had him fix the rent. We were only in year three of an eight-year lease, and I said, let's renegotiate this now. I want to redo a new one at 10 years, but you fix my rent for two years. And he did. You feel me? So you, you will got to bring something to the table, though. Don't simply go to the table and say, you need me, you need me, you need me, and, and ex expect them to give you everything. No, no, no. In a relevant location where we're all right now, people were banging down the door to get this place. And that's a good indication you want to be there. So many of us pride ourselves on cheap rent being here, and I'm just challenged by that. I'm challenged by that. You know, you really want those relevant locations. And then 4% a year increase is standard. It really is. It really is. So you just want to work that into your budget and be mindful. And we believe a good relationship would be reflected in a signed lease within three months. If you're going back and forth and you're bickering and two sides aren't giving, you know, and it goes beyond three months, it's probably not going to be a good relationship. I'm serious as a heartbeat on that. Please, 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 you know, don't stretch that out. I know they're in a rush to get things signed because they want people in there occupying. They want that free rent to start, you know, kicking in. So be mindful of that, okay, people? If it takes more than three months, because you're going to be in a relationship with this person for what, three years, five years? You know, we do no more than 10 years. We did a 10-year lease on this new location with two five-year options. People said, whoa, are you crazy? No, no, no. I know people in San Francisco that have 99-year leases on some of their businesses in San Francisco. Why? Because they want to be in a relevant location and that person who owns that building is not going to sell it. They know a lot of people will rent it, but you're not going to invest all that money. I put 140 k into this business. I'm not going to invest that kind of money unless I have a long-term lease. You feel me? All right. Everybody still with me? Everyone take a deep breath with me. Take a deep breath and breathe out. Okay, good. Any new people on the call? If you're coming on, wow, there's so many new people here. That's so cool. If you're still with me, type in there, type in there and say... Scooby-Doo. How about that? Give me a Scooby-Doo. We're all so serious here. Rich, you were tardy. Oh, Rich, that's it. Go stand in the handicapped bathroom and face the corner. All right. I got a Scooby-Doo? Yeah, because that's the other thing, folks. You know, people say, wow, you look great for 53 years old. You don't look stressed at all because I don't stress on any of this. To me, man, I'm so blessed to do what I do. It's just magic, you know? It's magic. And I, and I feel grateful every day. Everything that comes at me is an opportunity to grow, to be better, to do better, to serve better. It's not a burden. Nothing is a burden unless I choose to look at it that way. So it all begins with that mindset. And Scooby-Doo's got one of the best attitudes in the world, doesn't he? Give me a Scooby snack and life is beautiful. All right. So I'd like advice on how to talk to and motivate my instructors. We have 20 instructors. Three of them are part-time. The rest is volunteers. Their age is 10 to 50. I just don't know when to start and with what. I'd like to create an amazing team, but I don't have an outline or idea how to begin. Okay, I'll post it at Facebook. I have two links, one for my instructor's training experience and one for my new student experience. Both are going to serve you really, really well. The instructor's training experience takes somebody who you just brand new person all the way to teaching in a year. It's a year course. In one year, you should have a rock star instructor. If you don't, then you got a pretty bad you know, instructor's training program. But what do most people do? Uh, this is a three-year leadership program, and it's an upgrade of uh, $6,000. Heck yeah. If I can stretch out that leadership program that's an upgrade to three years, I'm going to make a lot of money off you and keep you here. No way. I want rock stars you know, to be in the pipe in a year. And if I've got a killer instructor's and training program, boom, you should be on it in a year. You feel me? But again, what are people trying to do? Save 50 cents instead of earning a dollar. The more rock stars I produce, the more freedom I have, the more schools I can open, and they're spreading the word and making a difference, right? So I'll post those two links. Now, looking at the question, though, what I saw right away, three of them are part-time. Part-time effort, part-time results. That is the first issue that you have. I would take one of those part-timers, make them full-time, and get rid of the other two part-timers, or you know, keep them on the back burner. 
Full-time effort, full-time results. If your people are vested in you and this is their career and this is their life, are they going to treat it differently and work differently? Absolutely. I would assume those part-timers are in college or those part-timers have a regular job. So they could take it or leave it when the day's done. So am I motivated after doing an eight-hour day to come to your school and be a rock star? I don't think so. Not nine times out of ten anyways. My top performers are people who work for me 30 to 40 hours a week. That's it. Find a way to make that happen. And second, the rest are volunteers. Ah, that's yucky. Volunteer is a bad word. Volunteer is something you do at the food bank on Thanksgiving, right? Go serve some food. I volunteered at, at the food bank. Noble, but you know, it's not something that you just jump for joy on a daily basis. So instead of calling them volunteers, instructors in training, wah, right? There you go. You got to give it a better title. And, and, and their ages are 10 to 50. That doesn't matter. Some of my best rock stars are 14 years old, 15. Some of the older adults, yeah, they're tired. They don't want to teach. You know, it fills their ego to stand in front of a class and bark, bark, bark because some manager has been on their tail all day long at work. So they get to exercise authority. That may not necessarily be the best person there. And if you have 20 of them, 20 of them, that, that's a lot. I, I hope for 20 instructors, you're running 600 students out of your school because that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people that have teaching, you know. Um, so I'd be really mindful of that. Cool? So I'll post those two things at Facebook after this or email me at professor at onemartialarts.com and I'll send those over to you. All right. Continuing on. Um, I currently do two lesson trials but want to know more about your kids' four-week trials. Could you tell me more about the flow and timing or give a general outline? For instance, do you put the kids right into a normal class the first time they come in? When do you go over programs or do you wait for them to ask? Those are great questions. Great questions. So. We always, you know, we did, we've got, we've done it all, people. We've done the two private lesson intro. You know, we've done the group intro. We've done the buddy day intro. We've done the every intro you can imagine. We've sliced and diced and every, but when the day's done, I truly, truly believe for a mom to have her in our school for four weeks, sitting in the waiting area, talking to other moms, experiencing the culture of what we offer, rich in life skills, all those different things, we have a higher conversion rate. Now, we convert at about 75, 80%. That's pretty high. Most schools average about 55, 60%. You feel me? And I think part of that was once we moved away from that intro, two class intro, and we moved into that um, group environment, it served purpose. Secondly, we used to do these intros, you know, one-on-ones. The challenge with that, number one, the kids going, uh, where's the other kids? Two, it does not really simulate the true environment they're gonna be experiencing on a class-to-class -class basis. So we get them into the class right away. We do the warm up together, you know, they do the mat chat together, then immediately, boom, we pull them out, we give them to instructor and we do a mini intro, you know, right there. While the other class is going on, they're right there, but we put them closest to the pony wall where that new parent is sitting so the parent hears everything that's going on. We go over respect, we go over discipline and all that is in that document, the new student experience. And if you want that, I'll share that with you there. So getting into more of that question, we always share with the prospective client that by choosing to take our trial, they will have four weeks to see if we are a good fit for them or not. We say that with all humility. Hey, we really recommend this four-week trial because we believe in a month's time, you'll know if we're a good fit for you or not. And they look at us like, wow, how is that so refreshing after they've came from three other karate schools where they're going, yeah, come on in or have a private intro, sit you in my office, boom, 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 four-year contract, bam. It's so refreshing. And people tell me that all the time. We put them into a four-week email flow via Rainmaker. So automatically, boom, once you sign up for the trial, you get an email welcoming you to One Martial Arts with all the details, whatever, video links, you know, different things like that. A week later, you get another email. Hey, have you noticed your child has earned these life skills badges? What makes One Martial Arts very special is we're rich on life skills education. We talk a little about One Merit badges. Third week, you're coming up on week number three. Here's a survey. Let us know how we're doing and what we can do better for you. Establishing that we are a service-based business. We are here to serve you. I am not the master and you are the lowly student. You're lucky to train with me. No way. We're about service. Please, after three weeks, how can I serve you even better? And then we put in there, you know, that here's our tuition rates. It's there in a PDF file so they know what's coming up. Fourth week. Hey, you're on your last week. You know, if we can serve you better and you want to sign up, come up to the front desk. If you'd like a phone call, please let us know in the email. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, please let us know. We don't demand it. We don't push it. We don't call them. We do not call them. I know, isn't that crazy? We do not call them. And people look at me like, are you nuts? Are you nuts? Hey, you get those telemarketers. When do you call somebody? 
Don't do it during the day and just leave a voicemail. How ineffective is that? What are you going to do? You're going to call them in the middle of dinner? When? After you get done with classes at 830 at night? When? When are you going to call them? Or even the program director? You know, there's nothing more enriching than to have that instructor in the mix. So what do we do? We send out a you did great card. We send a welcome postcard. And then in that fourth week, we let them know. Come by the front desk. We're happy to talk to you. And of course, culturally, all my instructors know this is a brand new person on a four-week trial. What are we doing after every class? We're going up to that parent. How's it going? Yeah, I've really noticed a difference in their confidence because we're pre-framed. We know why mom brought that kid. We do that in instructor's training. Hey, we got a new student, little Johnny Smith. Mom's big on confidence. She wants him to build his confidence. Guess what we're talking to mom about at the end of every class? Confidence, confidence, confidence. And we'll even say, hey, you know, we noticed this is Johnny's last week. We hope you choose to continue with us. Not, are you going to sign up? Oh, that's horrible, right? So you want to be even mindful of how that's set. All right. Did I cover all that? Yeah, there it is. Number three, we check with the parent once a week. We send them welcome and a you did great card. I know I'm moving really fast, but I'm playing catch up here. I want to make sure I get all these questions in. Everybody still with me? All right. Okay. Do you have all your instructors, both part and full-time, sign a non-compete agreement? And if so, can you give some insight into how to spell it out, especially if you have someone that you would want to back opening their own school? I'm wondering about things like time frame, distance from the other specifics to protect you and your image. In California, there isn't a non-compete agreement to protect a school owner. There isn't. The only type of non-compete that exists is the kind that if I sell the school to somebody, I can't compete with them and open up half a block away or next door. That was going on in the 80s and 90s for a while. People would sell a school to somebody and then the head instructor would open up a block away, a block away and take all those students with them. And then this guy's left in there holding the bag with this school and no students. So the only non-compete we have in California, and believe me, I've gone through this with a fine tooth comb. I've talked to lawyers, several lawyers. You know, there is not a non-compete clause in California only to serve the purple bu person buying the business. Now, with that said, if you want to try to sit with a lawyer and draw up, you know, something, hey, anything can be legal. Well, it's unlawful in the state of California to have a non-compete clause. Well, you knew that, sir. It was in the agreement you signed. We put that there, that basically it is unlawful, but we're bypassing that law by writing this agreement we're both agreeing upon. Yeah, you could do that, but it'd be hard pressed in a court of law in California to get that to go through because there is a precedent, right? There's a precedent that you're dealing with. So you want to be mindful of that too. But my feeling is train my team to do better than me create a, a system where they can advance they need to see that 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 what your business is going to like three to five years from now right i start out as a junior leader junior instructor assistant instructor senior instructor i become an operating partner you know and i'm running one whole school next i become a franchisee and i buy part of that school next you know i buy the whole school and just pay you a franchise fee Next, I buy another one in your franchise and pay your franchise fee. Next, I buy another one. And that's our game plan moving forward. I want to provide these guys. I mean, come on. I make more than some doctors and lawyers. I show my kids. I show all my, my, my team. Look at this tax return. I made $300,000 I took home last year. That's not bad for a martial arts instructor. Not at all. And they're going, wow, yeah, that's cool. You know, I got a guy who's 23 years old that if everything goes well this year, that kid's going to make 80K. You know, and if he does everything right, it, I could be 100 in no time. That rocks. That rocks. And I'm going to help him buy a house. All that's part of the game plan. But again, I can't just serve my clients. I want my clients to be successful, but I want my team to be successful. You feel me on that? And I don't want to live in fear. I refuse to live in fear. You know what? If this guy's going to open up a block away and take half my students, then I missed the boat. I was, you know, I didn't train him well. I was a bad judge of character. I didn't have a, a the vision you know, clear, you know, he doesn't get my culture. None of those things are in place. She, you know, she, all, all those things, right? So I'm, I'm ever mindful. I want to create a business that people want to work for, want to work for. How many of these guys come to me? And I get it every day from instructors that are working for school owners, just disenchanted. They feel disrespected. They feel devalued. That's the instructor's fault. That's the business owner's fault. So you want to be really mindful of that. Cool. Do you, do you do referral programs where kids earn tickets for prizes, for instance? I was planning where, where each buddy you bring, you get a ticket, enter a drive for a free Wave Master, Nintendo DS, free summer camp, free Ninja Night for the rest of the year. What are your thoughts on this type of referral? Um, again, it's much like the everyday direct mail piece. If you just do them all the time, people become desensitized to that, and it's of no value to them. 
You feel me? So it's really important that when you do those types of things, that you create something that that's time sensitive, that people get excited about, that you're promoting six months, six weeks before it actually happens. It has a deadline and don't run it too long. Like we do a summer referral contest, which is really, really has huge impact. So we're hyping it up right around May. Every class you come to, you get a ticket. Every specialty event you come to over the summer, you get two tickets. Every time you bring a friend to class, you get another ticket. You know, bump, 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 bump. And then at the end of the summer, you know, we have the drawing for prizes. That is inspiring. Why? Summer is the dead time for a lot of people. People want training. So we want to be mindful. Sign up for a week of summer camp. You get three tickets. Whatever the case may be, you create that. But it, it, I find summer is the best time for us, for us, for us. You can do one in January, right? New student referral contest, ba 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 ba. So yeah, I, I think they're effective and they serve their purpose, but be mindful. You're just not inundating people with these kinds of things all the time where it become desensitized. Ah, oh, it's no big deal. Hey, you know, another, another thing. Make sense? I hope so. All right, I've noticed on your match we you have dots. And I try to answer all your questions, folks. I'm guessing this is to keep everybody in neat lines. I was wondering what was the distance between each spot and each line? Well, yeah, I mean, for us, um, the red dots are super, super powerful. I mean, the green dots we use because when we say line up, you know, we're not sitting there with our hands on kids' shoulders, shifting them around, trying to find a spot. We say, stand on a green dot. And they're there within five seconds. So we space them out every five feet because if you do a pumse or one of your katas, ask yourself, is he going to kick this guy behind him? Is he going to kick to the left or the right? Be mindful, depending upon your curriculum, that's how you should space them out. For us, it's every five feet. Cool? And if you want those vinyl dots, you can get them at seton, S-E-T-O-N dot com. We use the three-inch vinyl dots. Vinyl, not paper, vinyl. Get the vinyl dots. They'll stay on your floor forever, forever, forever. Cool. Um, and this last question, I'm going to cover this real quickly. I'm very interested in the Excellent Kids program. And after this, I'll open it up to your questions, okay? We're a little bit over right now by about seven minutes, but everybody's still here. You had sent me a lesson plan in the past, and I love it. Is there a cost per month to use the program? Okay, Excellent Kids is something I developed for my four- to six-year-olds. For me, I again, my value system, right? I don't bring my four-year-old to karate school to learn to kick and punch. And if I want you to teach him gross motor skills and hopping through a ring, I'm going to take him to freaking Jimboree. I don't want to be Jimboree in a karate uniform. There is no value for me associated with that. And in order to earn my, my, my you know, next rank, I got to jump from hoop to hoop, you know, like a little bunny rabbit. For me, that's Jimboree in a karate uniform. I'm sorry. That's just me though. Okay. And, and I don't get it. I just don't get it because it's not martial arts based. It's just a kid hopping like a rabbit from ring to ring. And you know, you've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. So I really sat about creating a life skills based program that, that cater age specifically to four to six year olds. It's a 12 week program feeding, featuring lesson plans for 12 age specific life skills. Kids are in stripes and badges weekly for each skill. Each class features a parent participation portion and handout. That was my big aha moment to bridge the gap for that parent that says, I wish my child was as well behaved at home as they're at your school. We tell those kids, all right, your parents are coming onto the floor. Remember, your parents are going to choose if you earn that merit badge or not. It could be confidence. Next week is stranger. And we tell the parents, if they did not do a great job with you, please don't award them the badge. Read your student parent handout. Make them earn it at home. All those parents are empowered. Those kids are responding. And again, we're, we're developing those habits. Our instructors are empowered because they have the mat chats and the handouts borrowed from one merit badges. They're there as well. And there's a one-time purchase of $950 and there's no ongoing monthly subscriptions. Again, I don't need you to pay my rent. I don't want you to buy my new Tesla. So I don't want to count on that consistent revenue from subscriptions. I, again, trying to be an innovator, doing something outside the industry. You might pay more up front. We've even talked about dividing that up into three payments. But the bottom line is you'll never pay me for anything beyond that $950. Feel me? Other than buying more badges and more stripes as needed. So this is basically the components. You have your lesson plans. And again, they're written out. I, I, I'm a purist when it comes to education. These are PDFs. You download them. You read them. No animated characters. We're, we're going to do a whole video component down the line. But I want to keep the price point down. I know we're all struggling school owners and we want to make sure we keep the price point down. There are life skill stripes. The kids love to get those stripes on their belt, but then what backs that up even more is, is the life skill badge. And what backs it up the step further is that parent participation and the handout that they get. You see it? Pretty cool, huh? Simple nuts and bolts. 
All right. So I want to open the floor to questions. Um, I, I hope I, I did enough on that. I don't like to talk about my products. I believe it's about attraction, not promotion. And and like I said, we're at 284 One Merit Badge clients worldwide, and that's with very little marketing. I, I, I believe through my service, I believe through my examples that I offer you in the industry, through what I do and what I say and walking my talk, that you will be attracted to things like excellent kids or One Merit Badges. Cool. All right. Give me those questions. I'm going to take a couple of questions. We're 10 minutes over, but you know, before we wrap this up, um, go ahead. Give me those questions, sir. Where did you get your dots? Kevin, that was Seton, S C T O N.com. And it's the three inch vinyl dots, three inch vinyl dots. Oh, okay. Good. I must've did well today. If only questions I have here is about where to get the vinyl dots. <laughs> Either my information is really awful. <laughs> or, or you really need those vinyl dots. Yeah, they're, they're, they're integral. I didn't mention we also have two rows right down the middle of red dots for partner drills that we do. Partner drills, line drills, team drills. So you know, make sure you get two color dots. Any other questions? Post those questions for me, people. Are the one merit, Chris, are the one merit bat? Yes. Oh, God, I didn't put Australia. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. Do you know Graham McDonald? He's got three big schools. Go to the One Merit Badge Facebook page. Graham does a wonderful testimonial. When Graham and Phil first came to me, they had one school at about 450. They bought the full, they bought the whole system. I mean, not just the basic kit. They bought every merit badge and support material that I had. And they put that into the first school. Boom, they shot up to 600. They opened a second school. Again, bought the full rack. It was around, I don't know, 3,000 they spent. And then they got that. Boom, that school's up to like five, 600. Now they're on their third school. And they've said it to me. Look at his testimonial. Graham McDonald. I think they're called WA in Perth. Perth, Chris? Perth? We have tons of uh, One Merit Badge clients in Australia. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. Um, Gary, thanks for my time. Thank you, sir. Uh, how does your parents feel about the badges, sewing or iron? Okay, let's go through that. We did our first batch of merit badges and they were iron on. And, and you know, kids were coming to class, badge, badge, white spot, white spot, badge, badge. So the iron on isn't very good. So then we went to sewing. It's cumbersome and the parents don't like it. So now we're using a thing called badge magic. It's pretty inexpensive. Each sheet is like a dollar, I don't know, 90 or something like that wholesale where we get it. We sell it to you for about that price. You sell it to your parents for about five bucks, four ninety nine, and they can get like 50 badges out of one sheet. You peel off one side, you affix the badge, you cut around that, peel off the back side, you go straight to the uniform. We, we will tell the client, throw it in the dryer, you know, for five minutes and so it adheres. You know, some people will, will iron it really quick after just to make the glue a little tighter. But my son, we tested it for six months, only 3% of his badges came off. And then you just cut another piece and put it right back on. So now what's great, you talk about a higher level of service, the parent doesn't have to sew it on and the parent doesn't have to iron it on. How cool is that? This guy at, at the last year's Super Show said, hey, I'm going to stay, take it a step further. We're going to start gluing. We're going to start cutting the badges and affixing them to the thing already. We're going to fix it to the uniform already. You know why? That way at the end of the class, we're not just handing them a badge. I went, whoa, you're going to peel that off and put it right on the uniform like you're pinning this medal of honor on them. So again, I love that innovation. So that's what we recommend. Badge magic is used by all the um, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Cool. Next question. Next question. Any more questions? Give me those last minute burning desires. I don't want to take too much of your time, folks. So do we have any other questions? Okay. Chris, I have 225 students as of yesterday in a part-time school. Wow. That is super cool, sir. And you want to start a full-time center. Did you build a part-time school before moving into – yes, sir. Absolutely. When I opened my first location in San Francisco, you're way ahead of me, sir. I had 100 students to open my door. I was teaching at the Park and Rec. I was teaching at three different health clubs. I was teaching out of my dad's school. I was teaching out of one of my instructor schools. I had all this all over. I was driving like a maniac you know, every day. So when I opened my doors, I basically opened with a hundred kickboxers because at the time Tybo was really big in the year 2000 and they were the, the majority of what we had. You know, I didn't want to take any of the martial arts students from the other school. I, I didn't think that was respectful. So I basically told them you can't come with me. And that was out of respect for the other people that, you know, I, I was helping. But sir, if you have 225, you should absolutely open a school. Good for you, Chris. Good for you. Anybody else there have a question before we wrap it up? 
All right. So if you have another question, type it in there. What do I have coming up? I hope you read my latest article in Martial Arts Success Magazine, courtesy of Century. It is called Service Without Selling. Is this the future of the martial arts industry? I believe it's one future. You know, there'll still be the people with long-term contracts and all that. And if you believe in that, fit your value system, more power to you. Who am I to say? But for me, I believe service. I feel better. It works for me. You know, it's starting to work for a lot of people in our industry. I'll be down in Costa Mesa on Sunday, April 26th. I'll be out there for the Hyper Fight Club and Bully Defense Certification. I'll be sharing my thoughts. I'll be out there training too. You know, I'll be answering all your questions, hanging out. Uh, Roland's bringing me in for that. I love Roland Osborne. His programs are phenomenal. I like aligning myself with quality people like that, and products like that. So I'll be then, of course, I'll be speaking again for my sixth year in a row at the Martial Arts Super Show, July 6th through 8th. My whole thing is about designing a high-performance team, but it's unlike anything else that's out there. We get the same information all the time. This is unique. It's innovative, and I believe it's going to revolutionize the way we train people. Cool? And it, again, I think it has a much longer-term effect. Dominic. Dominic, sir. Um, how can you contact me? Absolutely, sir. Let me get to that next, Dominic, sir. All my information is right here. Take a snapshot of this. Uh, you can contact me at professor at onemartialarts.com. I have brandonbleaser.com, which has tons of my blogs and articles, things like that. Onemeritbadges.com, onemartialarts.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn. I forgot to throw in LinkedIn. I'm there as well. You can find me through all those social media resources. And again, I'm sponsored by Rainmaker, Ron Sell, Scott. You guys are gifts to our industry. I love what you do. I'm a Rainmaker client. They're simple, powerful, and easy to use martial arts software. I've done them all, people. I've used three or four different softwares out there. And for me, we know there's going to be problems with software. Please, if any salesperson out there tells you their software is perfect, they are full of it. We all know that. There's glitches. Things go down. Things happen. It just does. So what do we really look for in great software? Support. I want someone that's going to act within 24 to 48 hours, not give me a bunch of lip service, who's going to make the things happen when I need them to. Cool? And that's why I stay with Rainmaker. Not because they're perfect, not because their product's perfect. They're constantly innovating. They're making it better. But more so than that, Scott and Ron will own it. If they make a mistake, if they're not doing something right, they don't get defensive. They apologize and they go after it and they cure it for you. And that's really what you're looking for. Cool? So that's how you can find me, folks. If you don't have any last minute questions, let's see, let's see. Because I'm here to the end. I want to take care of you. All right. I just want to say, oh, Dominic, I'll see you over there at Hyper. Absolutely, sir. So we can have a conversation there as well. I am Brandon Beliso. Thank you for attending my monthly Q&A. Those of you who had to get off the call, those of you who didn't make it, I will post a recording of this to serve you at a higher level. Um, catch me at the Super Show. See you down at Hyper and Costa Mesa. Read my articles. Find me at Facebook. I'm here to serve and restore your faith that the martial arts industry is alive and well, and there's people who care about you. And until then, you go out there and make a difference. Brandon Beliso, take care, everybody. Bye.